Welcome back to Warhawk Football, everybody, and week seven as Kalispell travels on the road to meet Washington State. The Warhawks enter four and one on the season, set to meet the two and two Cougars. In their last game, we saw Kalispell's rushing attack set a team record over 400 rushing yards, most of those going to Kyle Thomas. Kalispell's ground game will likely be a focus today as the Warhawks look to make it two wins in a row in the highly competitive Pac-12 North. The journey continues today, and here we go! Let's get underway in Week 7. This is a booming kick through the end zone, setting up Kalispell at the 25. Brandon Warren's numbers this year aren't all that impressive. He does have eight interceptions already in five games. Kalispell opens with two backs in the game and a throw out to Kyle Thomas in the flats, and he'll pick up a gain of 13 to begin the day. Thomas was outstanding last week and had his best game perhaps as a Warhawk. He'll get the carry now on first down and picks up nine more. That puts him over 400 rushing yards on the season. Now four rushing touchdowns after last week's game. Now Payne is in the slot on second down, and Warren connects with Carl Joyce with a defender all over him. It's a gain of seven. Now they go to Marcus Payne in the backfield. He'll get this and fall ahead, getting seven yards. Payne still in the game now, second down from the bunch. Here's Warren across the middle. That's caught by Justin Payne. Nice flow to this first possession for the Warhawks. Play action now, Warren with time and an open man. That's Carl Joyce on the eight yard pickup. We haven't seen the big plays from Joyce this year. Still waiting on that. Now it's Warren breaking a tackle. He avoids the loss and picks up the first down. Kalispell throwing everything they've got here at Washington State. First and 10 across the middle broken up. Austin Sisk with the deflection. That was very nice. Second down. Off play action, Warren's going up top, wants Joyce and overthrows him badly. Incomplete, it's third down. Antoine Knightley alone to the right side. Warren, under pressure, drifting outside, tries to turn the corner and he can't do it. Set for a monster loss by John Griffin. A promising drive, but now just a field goal try for Rick Thomas from right hash. And the Warhawks are on the board first. Big update now in the top 10 as Kalispell hopes to find some teams to leapfrog in the standings. We have Oklahoma over Texas. I wouldn't expect the Longhorns to fall very far though. Now Washington State takes over. These teams played a 49 to 47 game a year ago and the keeper here is Derek McMillan. He's gonna break a couple tackles. Someone bring him down. Thank you Mo Collins. Gain of 16. I believe it was five overtimes though in that game as Kalispell emerged victorious and now a good stop made by Akinjide. McMillan does like to run and has a lot of speed at the receiver position. He'll throw this outside on third down. Peterson with no chance. Good tackle by Baker and a quick drive. Warhawks begin again, three receivers in the game and Thomas stays in to block. Warren's going up top, Joyce is downfield, and the pass nearly picked off by Jason Williams. That connection has fallen so far from where it was a couple years ago. Now third and nine, pressure on Warren, they got him inside the 20. Pass rush is the key against this Kalispell offense, Washington State getting it so far. 3-0 in the first, McMillan pumps short. He'll air it out downfield, it's nearly picked! Jamari Akinjide dropped it! McMillan just two interceptions on the season, nearly a third. Now I heard a lot of Terry Robinson, I always love seeing that. It's a gain of four. Kalispell backs off, their third down defense can be very good, and they make another play! It's Chris Baker who had some outstanding moments in last week's game. So back and forth here with the punts, Kalispell football, and this is Marcus Payne up the middle. Not much there, but he does get a few, making it third and short. Thomas back in the game, running left, and he'll get it with the help of his right guard, Mike Hill. Warhawks operate with twin tight ends this time. On first down, the pressure's in the face of Warren, and he barely gets it away. But another team able to apply the pressure, and that can really slow this offense down. On second down, they'll bust out the option. Flip out to Marcus Payne. There he goes across the 50. Another big play, and Kalispell was full of them last week. 
This right here is their 16th run on the season over 20 yards. It sure seems like this offense is really changing as Warren is chased again and dropped for another big loss. He's got to get that football away, but sometimes you just can't do much about it. Third and 19. He's sacked again. He's going to get hurt if they don't change things up. We've seen this before. Washington State's defense playing tough. They held us to 20 points in regulation last year. Most of the points scored in that game were in OT. Now back we go to the Cougar offense. After six yards by Robinson, McMillan is smashed in the backfield. That's what Wesley Merrill does. He just delivers big hits. Third and eight on the outside. Good throw out to Tony Hines for a first down. Here's some motion from Kingsley Howell, their star tight end. Looks like more option. McMillan flips it out to the tight end, and Howell with good power breaks a couple tackles. He moves the chains. Was not expecting the tight end to receive an option pitch. McMillan faces the blitz and throws across the middle. Again, caught by Hines. Third down and four. Baker the high safety. Kalispell brings four. McMillan to run. Tripped up and does not get it. That's Chad Moore forcing another fourth down. Kalispell in their punt safe defense, but no fake. That would have been a prime spot for it. And a returnable kick here. Belafonte to the sideline where he's hit hard at the 25. Still, it's just a 3-0 game. One of the more low-scoring affairs on the season. But here's Thomas with some daylight. He'll shake out a defender across the 50. It's another 20-plus yard run for Kyle Thomas. Warren, by the way, has four such runs on the year. He'll keep it on this one, spinning ahead and gaining six more. Warhawks with two receivers to the right side. Another keeper. Warren right down the middle for another first down. We're seeing the running game be a lot more productive than the pass. But they will throw it on first down. And Warren's going to settle underneath here to Hayden John Charles. A lot of Kalispell's game plan is focused on hitting the big play in the pass game. But that might not be the best way to go about things as Thomas grinds out another first down. Warhawks got to get that quick pass game going. On first and 10, across the middle, complete to number 85. That's Reggie Jackson. Kalispell into the red zone here. Two tight ends, they'll run left. Kyle Thomas finds a hole, gets through the five, and down to the one. Eight-yard pickup, now Kalispell trying to punch it in. Hand off here, Kyle Thomas runs into his own man, and he's denied. Third down. Now they bring in Payne. On third down, they run again. Marcus Payne in for the touchdown. Kalispell extends their lead. Good power there at the end by Marcus Payne. The Warhawk running game again gets the job done, and now it's 10 to nothing as the Cougars still in search of their first points. Here's McMillan, a little hesitant, and he lost the football. That is not free by Wesley Merrill, and the Warhawks have taken it back. When there's a big hit, you can assume number 55 was the cause of it. Kalispell wants to open up this lead. First and 10. It's a flea flicker, and Warren is sacked, and he had a man open downfield. If they just had the protection, they had a touchdown. Second and 16, Warren with a laser across the middle. That's a big throw. Don't want to see you get the turnover and then waste the opportunity. Third and one, Marcus Payne in some trouble, and he won't get there. Excellent pursuit out of the... Cougar defense. You have to give Washington State some credit, holding Kalispell to 13 points at this stage, but their offense still has the donut on the scoreboard. Pedro Smith for 15. They'll try and change it now. It's a two-minute drill. Screen. Peterson, no chance. Not with Boogie Turner out there. A defensive tackle covering screens. What a frustrating defense this must be to face. Third and 11 here. Hines on the catch. A stiff form and then brought down. Well shy of the sticks. They're going to punt it back to Belafonte and he will return this right at the 10-yard uh, line. Belafonte breaks free there with a dynamic spin move. And now the speed on display. Flag down. This is not going to count. But the Belafonte show is always must-see action. Warhawks now have to begin inside their own 15. So how aggressive did they get here? Well, that's a risky throw out of Warren, but it was the perfect pass to Justin Payne. 
Still a very long way to go. They'll need some big chunks as Warren is sacked again. Washington State now with, I think, four or five sacks in this half. They've got to find a way to minimize this. Here's a quick throw, and that does minimize the sack, but also the yardage they're going to pick up. So it looks like this half is just about over. 16 seconds here for Washington State. Three safeties deep at the Kalispell 40, and a screen for Peterson that goes backwards. It looks like that's going to do it here for the first half. Warhawks up 13 to nothing. A lot less scoring than I expected to see today. And the Warhawk defense pitching themselves a shutout. Second half coming up next. I want to start incorporating more polls and questions into these episodes. My question to you today, what Warhawk do you miss the most right now? I've thought about this quite a bit lately. I really miss Donnie Castillo right now. I miss watching him go out there and make some plays, although Hayden John Charles has been excellent. Here in the second half, it's Cougar football as we blitz McMillan and somehow he makes the play work to Pedro Smith. But if that's the kind of play it takes to beat our defense, you can't really be mad. Here's Peterson, a lot of havoc in the backfield, drop for a monster loss. Chris Baker's there. Second down and 15, they'll sweep it right side. Peterson, not a good day for him. Every play continues to lose yards. Third and 17, Kalispell backs off and they bring Tommy Jordan in the game. McMillan gets it away in time, heaving deep and nearly picked by Tommy Jordan. Fourth down. Let's see if the offense can pick up the pace now in the second half, hopefully with more of the running game. And they'll start on the ground here with Brandon Warren all the way outside, flashing the wheels. 16 yards on the pickup. Three wide here for Kalispell, and Warren's gonna roll outside the pocket. He has a wide open man and throws it to him at the final moment. Kinda lost the chance at yards after the catch there. Here's second down for Brandon Warren. Pressure in his face, gets it out in time. Hayden John Charles with another reception. Justin Payne slot left here on second down. Cougars bring the blitz. Warren gets it away for Joyce, and he makes the catch at the sideline. What a pass. How do you defend that? It's a great route by Joyce. He gets separation to the outside, and Warren puts it right there with defenders all around him. Sweep left. This is Thomas to the outside and a gain of four. A lot less rushing yards today for Kalispell. They have tried though. Here's a give to Belafonte. He'll find a crease and picks up another first down. Warhawks face goal to go. Bunch formation. Roll out to the right. Warren needs to make a decision. Passes end zone. Touchdown. It's Reggie Jackson. Hayden John Charles needed a quick rest, and that means Jackson gets the opportunity. Maybe Hayden doesn't need gloves. He needs to get his conditioning up. 20 to nothing, Warhawks. Still pitching the shutout here in the third quarter. Cougars take over. Derek McMillan gets this away from Montgomery. This pass game has really taken a big step back this year. McMillan's numbers have dropped 76 yards per game compared to last season. On second down, he fires to the sideline, and these safeties continue to make plays. Baker, Jordan, Akinjide, we've seen it from all of them today, and now Courtney Peterson gets nothing, it's fourth down. The Warhawk defense playing as dominant as we've ever seen. Here's Warren rolling out once again, he pumps, no one bites on it, but he'll find Hayden John Charles, who has been pretty busy today, that's his seventh catch. With the third quarter winding down, this is going to be Warren keeping all the way. Makes a move and breaks to the outside. Knightley leads the way. Warren inside the 30. What a run. 34 more. Love this move he made here to break free. Brandon Warren setting up Kalispell in field goal range. First down. Gets this out quick again. Kyle Thomas. Now we see Warren not taking sacks. They've adjusted here in the second half. They motion out a screen pass for Marcus Payne. First down, he'll run through a defender. Payne to the one, but he can't score. So close. Payne's had some great play this year. First and goal, they toss it. Now it's Thomas's turn. Touchdown. Thomas got to the one. Payne scored earlier. 
Now they just change it around. Warhawks up 27 to nothing, and this defense will try to keep the shutout intact. Someone tell Carl Joyce he plays offense, by the way. No sacks, one turnover. Well, I guess you can't say that anymore. Hello, Mario Townsend. I feel like he's becoming the new fan favorite on defense. Third and 15. McMillan's got time, steps up, floats out, and it's caught by Smith. Akinjide was close but could not break it up. New set of downs now for the Cougars. Trying to get across the 50. Here's a floater caught by Kingsley Howell. Just his first of the day. The plan to limit him surely has worked. On second down, McMillan to the sideline. Now it's Tony Hines. Suddenly the Cougars getting into scoring range. And here's another one to the outside. Howell gets the best of Akinjide. Nine yard pickup. Warhawk defense maybe having their worst drive of the day right here. McMillan wants to run and he meets number eight. That is Maurice Collins with another sack. Make it seven on the year. Here's third down. McMillan finds an open man, but Smith is out of bounds and that makes it fourth and four. And the Cougars are going to keep the offense out there. They'll go for it. Four on the rush. McMillan steps through up the middle and he's got it. First down, McMillan. Now the shutout in major jeopardy. Handoff goes to Peterson. He has not had a running lane once today. Lost it two, and there's Mario Townsend. It's third down for the Cougars. Another handoff. Peterson, no chance. It's Mario again. Townsend with four tackles for a loss, and poor Courtney Peterson. He can't get... A yard. It's fourth down and they're going for it. McMillan to the middle. It's incomplete. Shutout intact and the Warhawks take over. Still some minutes though to run off this clock as the Warhawks take over. Handoff goes to Thomas all the way to the right side. Gain of a couple. Washington State hasn't played great run defense, but they didn't play as poorly as ASU. Here's third and four. Warren's going to run now. He pumps and he tries to get the first down himself to no avail. Another punt is forced. Wazoo trying to break this shutout. This might be their very last opportunity. McMillan throws it short for Tony Hines and he's gonna escape Bozeman and that'll be a first down. Really bad play there for Bozeman. You gotta play physical. Here's second down with the empty backfield. McMillan incomplete. They drop back Chad Moore. That's who makes the play. Warhawks bring three. Third down for McMillan, and ripped to the ground and sacked. Number eight gets his eighth. What a year he's put together. And Kalispell takes over. Dustin Payment is out to play some quarterback this week. Austin Jenkins in the game. Colt Sully and Tyrone Houston. Payment's on the keeper, finds some room, and slides down safely eight yards. Belafonte is the back, payment deposits, here is Belafonte down the middle with the speed inside the 20, and he lost it at the end, but I don't think that's going to stand, another big run for Kalispell. Here's a second down, end around, payment gives this off to Colt Sully, and he'll lose a couple on the play. Time continues to wind down here, it's third down and 10, here's payment, Checks the defense. Now off and running. Payment is brought down. The clock is running. Wazoo does not use a timeout. And there it is. It's taken 112 games of Warhawk football. They have pitched their very first shutout in team history. After being very critical of this defense in the first half of last week's game, that's now six straight shutout quarters. Pretty dominant if you ask me. 27-0 is your final. The offense was far from perfect today, but they did not turn the football over, and they made the right adaptations in the second half. Brandon Warren far from stellar in this game, but only four incompletions, three in the first quarter. Hayden John Charles had seven catches, 63 yards, and Mario Townsend continues to be just one of the most entertaining players on this team. Whenever he makes a play, which they've been more and more often lately, it's always something of a spectacle. Now get this, the Warhawks who win 27 to nothing, again fall in the standings. 
We fell three spots last week. We fall another one today to number 12. Florida leapfrogs us. 27 to nothing. What more do you want? But Kalispell will get a chance next week to climb again. By the way, Patrick Miller still in the Heisman chase here, having a good year. But for us next week, we face the Auburn Tigers in one of these awkward non-conference battles in the middle of the season that we don't normally have, but we do this year for some reason. We take on the Tigers at home, who just lost to LSU, I want to say. They are 3-2 and two on the season, and they've lost their last two games. So they need to get this one to get back on track. There you see close losses to LSU and Ole Miss. With Auburn, I definitely am worried about their offensive line and potentially their ground game. They have a good quarterback in Blake Jackson, but it's their offensive line that I think is the main strength of this team. They also have a pretty talented defense. They're good at safety. So it should be a really good game as we return home. Hopefully we get some early snow or something to welcome them to Montana. One thing I wanted to talk about though is that you might see me calling a lot more cover two in game now and just putting our safeties in more stressful situations and that's all on purpose. I know there are going to be times where it doesn't work out for us, but what I've been doing more often is putting us in cover two when the other team gets across the 50 because I want them to think they can beat our safeties. I know how good they are, especially Baker and Jordan in coverage. And if they want to start throwing, you know, three, four verticals down there, I think our guys can close the gap. Maybe not every time, but that's why you're seeing Baker make so many plays because I'm forcing them to test the safeties. We have five underneath defenders sometimes, so what are you going to do? My favorite one is out of nickel 335 where you only have three rushers and occasionally that three man rush is still somewhat effective this year. So I love that 335 cover two when the field is shortened to about 30, 40 yards. Here are some stats now to wrap up this episode. Again, let me know what Warhawks do you miss the most right now? I want to know. Hayden John Charles, by the way, he'll be one that I miss the most. He has 187 career catches. We're on the road to 200 catches and the road to 200K. So hit that subscribe button. Man, that was a perfect setup. Mario Townsend has 29 career tackles for loss, 11 sacks. He just stuffs the stat sheet in so many areas. By the way, quick update here on Justin Colbert and Texas A&M. They are only three and four right now, so don't expect some sort of bowl game rematch or anything. They just lost to Alabama, and they're two and two in conference, and it looks like Colbert got hurt in this game, but I've checked the injury report, and he is not on it. That is going to do it for this episode, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed today's action. Please smash that like button if you did. Those likes are very helpful. So can we get this up to 1,000 likes? And also, on the road to 200,000 subscribers, we're very close. So hit that subscribe button. And you can also hit that join button next to it if you would like to become a member. That's completely up to you. But thank you as always. Love the support. Can't wait to see you soon. Have a great day.